another question which was asked in the previous board exam from chapter electrostatic for three mark and it is state gauss theorem in electrostatic and state expression for electric field intensity at a point outside infinitely long charge conducting cylinder so this gauss theorem we already learned in the previous question but then also let i tell you the statement here statement of the gauss theorem is electric flux over a closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times the charge enclosed total charge enclosed by the surface or we can write here total electric flux is equal to q by epsilon zero and this is the statement for gauss theorem now we use this gauss theorem and we prove or we obtain expression for electric intensity now you can see here now we consider here a, con uh, a charge cylinder a b Consider a charge cylinder AB of radius R as shown below. You can see this is cylinder AB, this is A and this is B of radius R. So charges are shown on its surface. Now Q is charge per unit or I can write here lambda, not Q. So here lambda, linear charge density, charge per unit length. Or you can say that it is a linear charge density. Then capital R radius of cylinder lambda. Yes, I written here lambda linear charge density again here. Charge divided by length is the linear charge density. Now after that, we have to find out electric intensity at this point P, which is at a distance small r from this cylinder AB. Then to find out electric intensity at point P, we have to draw a Gaussian cylinder. You can see this is a Gaussian cylinder. So Gaussian cylinder means on every portion of this cylinder, electric intensity is same. So Gaussian cylinder we drawn whose radius is small r and length is small l. And this is direction of the electric intensity. This is area element ds. Now here, we consider this Gaussian cylinder. You can see here. So to find out electric intensity at point P at a distance r from the cylinder, draw Gaussian cylinder whose radius is r and length is L that we already shown in a diagram. Now, here again, the procedure is similar to the previous one. We have to write two formulas of the electric flux, one by basic formula and one by Gauss law and both the formulas we have to equate. So electric flux is integration over a closed path E bar dot DS bar. Now here E bar dot DS bar, I can write here E DS cos it and this integration over a closed path as it is. Now here cos theta is again coming here 0 because electric intensity and area vector, they are along the same line. So the angle is 0. So cos 0 is 1. So after substituting cos 0, 1, we get electric flux is equal to integration over a closed path E ds. Now, so this E is a constant. We can take it out and integration is applicable to the ds only. So you can see here. So we are taken E outside integration of ds. Integration of ds is the surface area of the Gaussian surface. So Gaussian surface means it's a cylinder. So surface area of the Gaussian cylinder is what? 2 pi r into this length of the Gaussian cylinder is L. And the radius is smaller. So 2 e into 2 pi r L, we get electric flux. This is equation number 1. Similarly, by Gauss law, we have to write the electric flux. So by Gauss law, electric flux, we can write. You know that... So here we'll define lambda is charge per unit length. So charge is lambda into L. By Gauss law, we are written by Gauss law, electric flux is Q by epsilon zero. In that Q, we have to substitute here lambda L. Then we get electric flux lambda L by epsilon zero. And this is equation number two. This is equation number one. So both are the formulas of the electric flux. So we equate equation one and two. So equating one and two, and the cancelling the common term small l from both the sides. So we get expression for E and it is lambda upon 2 pi epsilon 0 r. And this is expression for electric intensity near a charge cylinder or a charge wire also you can say that. I hope everyone understood this derivation. 